How's it going guys, it's Najam, welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'm going to review the Chord Electronics Hugo 2. So I've had this for a very long time now. I think it's been more than 6 months. And I haven't reviewed it so I thought it's about time that I review the Hugo 2. So I want to get straight into the sound quality but just before I do that I want to quickly go over some things. So size wise it's not all that big actually. Now this isn't going to fit in your pocket or anything. But I want to just talk about the price. This costs £1800. So when it comes to portability, I don't think anybody in their right mind would actually be carrying this around with them. Um, so you know, if you're thinking about that, then that's just not a good option. While it is portable, I think the only reason it is portable is so you can move it around the house. So if you're like me, who listens to music at home, um, you can go upstairs and downstairs with this. So it uses the colour system. So if I go ahead and turn it on and I'll just turn the lights down. So as you can see it uses the colour system uh, which you still can't really see because I've got the brightness on it really really low. But um, So this is here is the power button and then you also got the volume control which changes colour um, depending on the volume that you want to set. And uh, you've got the LED indicator which indicates which quality file that you're playing back. Um, now also down here you've got uh, four buttons so you know you got the filter and all that I don't really use them I mess around with this one a bit but don't really use them all that much um, so it's got some options uh, some people are not really a good um, you know big fans of the the color system and the way that it works so you've got the volume control which is based on color uh, you've got the same thing with the power and the um sample rate indicator and everything i'm okay with it i think if you use the product long enough you get used to it it's the same thing with the mojo and i think going forward cord electronics is going to just use this system and i, I actually like the system it's pretty nice it looks nice um the battery life is around six or seven hours it's not 10 or eight um that's how much i get anyways um it's got a lot of power uh, considering it's a headphone amplifier but um, I think the more the better. Uh, I'm never going above yellow. Rarely on green, that's if you're playing DSD which is a bit quieter. But I mainly hover around red which is loud enough for me. And that means it's got a lot of headroom and that is a good thing because if it's got a lot of headroom that means it's just more linear and it's better sounding. Um, I think partly uh, with this you get, because it's got more power, um, you get you know those um, really really open highs so in terms of the build quality and everything it's pretty much spot on um, it's really good uh, there's nothing really to complain about and you know when it comes to the price again that's not something that you're going to complain about because of what you're getting most things in the audiophile market are a bit of snake oil this is actually legit um, and i think as well as all cord electronics products are pretty legit um, so you get what you pay for so let's talk about the sound quality which is what you're all here for i'm gonna try and split up into three sections so number one is gonna be when i got it first number two is just a little bit after that and then number three is everything after the first two weeks or something up till now and probably going on like forever in the future so when i first got this out of the box and i started using it i was absolutely shocked with the sound quality and I, I said in the past in the unboxing video which is way while back that I've probably was gonna compare it to the Chord Mojo but I don't think it's a good idea because it just I don't know it doesn't, it doesn't really seem like a good idea so that's green right now uh, I'll play something else let's go on um, favorites and I'll just shuffle it There's blue for you, so that's uh, 192 kilohertz. Um, so when I first got this out of the box and started listening to it, I was absolutely shocked with the sound quality. This thing is, you know, I mean, I started just wondering how I'm going to review this. Now, there are some reviews out there. I think I read one on Head Fire before I bought it. I'm not going to quote it, but it was something along the lines of there are no words to describe how this thing sounds and that kind of stuck with me when i you know started listening to it um, i listened to the whiplash soundtrack on caravan where the drum solo comes in um let's go on something else and green again and that drum solo 
sounded so good it literally sent goosebumps down my spine it was so good in terms of quality and i mean uh, when it comes to the sound stage the imaging and the detail and resolution this thing is way above any of us this is so it's, on, it's on a different level there's no reason at this point to talk about the sound stage the imaging the detail and everything because none of that really matters this thing is on a different level now the i've also read the review or by the verge i think is um, and they said that whenever you're listening to it you can't really focus on anything else because of the amount of detail and, and stuff that comes out it just pulls your attention and so after the first impression and this move on to second stage now so that was the first one uh the second one is this one and that actually holds up true somewhat well okay the thing is they're wrong i'm not going to quote the verge um, but they said there was uh, it can be a bit fatiguing and you know whatever the weird stuff like that um i'm going to say it's actually quite the opposite um there was a time when i was getting used to it where it was just pulling my attention like i couldn't read an article or anything when i listened to it um i couldn't do it. well it just pulled your attention like you know because of the amount of detail and the way it sounds it just put, puts you in a different place like without even having to think about it without even when normally you listen to music i suppose you close your eyes and you you know probably have to focus a little bit or tune everything out to get into a mood with this it does that automatically so i don't even have to close my eyes or anything listen to this and i'm on like two different dimensions at the same time if you know what i mean um so one in the headphones and the sound that little atmosphere that they've gone on in the headphones and then one in real life so i wasn't able to concentrate on any eye color whatever because it just you know, pulled my attention and if you try to fight against it just like with the mojo at first it can't be fatiguing because it's trying to pull your attention and you're just trying to you know uh, ignore it so that can get fatiguing um so after that we move on to the th- third stage now um after that i got used to it and i was a bit disappointed because it became normal so everything else sounded uh, normal like this thing as well and there was no none of that you know shocking and the wow factor anymore so it just became normal um, and i thought uh, maybe that was all it you know and now it's back to normal but that couldn't have been because i'm still listening to the same device same everything so what is it that just got rid of the wow factor and that made the hugo 2 what it was to me i'm the one oh we're on red now so that's cd quality um so i was a bit disappointed but i said you know what let's just let go um we probably come back and it did um so now this thing is i've gone used to it and it's not fatiguing at all in fact it's the opposite well actually yeah it's not fatiguing at all you can listen to it it sinks into the background if i want to focus on it i can focus on it and just turn everything off otherwise just obviously not going to work if i want to read an article if i want to you know do whatever i want this thing became the next mojo so it was sublime in every way um so it basically became perfect i mean it's spot on it doesn't annoy me at all whenever i listen to music it was just so easy to listen to and it just sort of synced into the background whenever i wanted it to so if i stopped focusing on it it synced into the background if i focus on the music then it'll just you know it'll start popping up with the music so it's really good um oh it's gone green now um so that's on 75ish percent now so you know that's the unlike the mojo where the power indicator was under the usb charging port this is on the power button so it's pretty cool um one of the biggest one of the things i found different about this and the mojo is that this actually goes t- through two cycles rather than one when it's turning on so it just you know cycles through <clears throat> and these buttons i like the mojo ones better because they are just better in my opinion <laughs> but yeah um next track let's see you know i mean to summarize this is on a different level i can't really tell you how good it sounds the well i don't want to say it is transparent because but it probably is the most transparent duck i've ever heard by that um what that means is that it just takes you way back into the recording it's really really intimate it goes right down to the really raw level and it's really hard to kind of just 
imagine anything sounding better than this and to think that there's a code Dave and the code uh, Hugo TT2 out there which I'll be honest with you after getting this I did want them um, but when I thought about it this is pretty much perfect for me this is my end game um, it's a little portable unit tiny little hi-fi unit and there's nothing even up to double the price unless it's a core electronic product in which case it would be something else uh, like a desktop dock um, there's nothing in the price range anything above it or below it that's going to come close to sounding as good as this so you can look at any music player any dedicated music player even with those uh, you know two bumps in them i forgot the name i think it's the n1 um, or the n8 even those really expensive music players that cost as much as this thing alone um, they are not going to come anywhere near in terms of sound quality so you have to think about it. you can either get this this is the tempo tech v1 and then it's just got a usb cable going in and look and the sound quality of this little unit here is absolutely astonishingly good it's extremely high end um there's literally nothing better that you can get that is portable uh you know so yeah when it comes to the price you get what you pay for the only thing i don't like about it is the quality of these buttons they're not the same as the mojo uh, the mojo ones were more tactile and clicky and by the way i'm using the code mojo as my desktop duck now um, i've actually unplugged the battery from it and now it's my desktop duck and it sounds really really good so with this whenever you listen to any type of music uh, or oh, one thing i want to point out is that if you listen to lower quality files it's actually gonna because it's really really extremely highly detailed and really transparent it's actually going to bring out all the compression and everything you'll be able to hear everything i mean i say i was i listened to a lot of vinyl rips and unlike the mojo this thing pointed out everything of it and i got a bit upset because most of my library is in vinyl rips and some of them have that noise flow and then there's clicking and everything um and I'm not against it, I actually like that, uh, it adds somewhat to the music uh, in my opinion um, because if you get it actually perfectly clean and everything, this is my, my is you know, it's gonna sound amazing even CD quality on this sounds pretty good um, but it does p bring out everything so you're gonna be able to hear that so if you listen to lower quality files uh, it'll still sound good I suppose but if you're going really really crap then it's gonna sound really bad I mean especially if you're listening on shuffle um, it's gonna jump from one to the other quality and you'll be able to hear a huge difference in the way it sounds and how bad one of the you know mp3 files is compared to a DST file or something it's gonna sound a lot different um, so that's one thing to you know keep in mind if you wanna use this you have to keep up with it and so the sound quality of the files has to be really really high quality as well which honestly is pretty easy to get um, cd quality is okay but it's not really all that impressive um one of the other things i want to talk about is the headphones now this thing with any monitors is going to have a lot of hiss even more than the mojo because it's not made for those although you can't use them because it has like 1000 milliwatts of power going out so you know whatever so when it comes to in-ear monitors while it will work and it'll sound really really good i suggest you get some really really high-end headphones and i say really really high-end because if you use low-end stuff with this um like the build on 03 or the build on 05 which is okay but you know it's not really uh, up to this level um, if you use someone like the m40x's or the uh, philips shp 9500s they're not going to take advantage of this whole um, output of this because they are limited in their own way i'm sorry for the background noise if you can hear anything um, so i've been using well try to get you know really high-end headphones with a planer that can actually move really really fast and get everything out of it because i found that with some of the in-ear monitors and some headphones it's the actual headphones that are limiting how this thing sounds so you know that's that um the tin hi-fi p1s which are a planar magnetic in-ear monitors they're pretty good uh, but they're not as good as the uh, mj2 headphones that i got um those have an electrostar i mean an electret driver in them and they sound sublime absolutely amazing on this thing um so i've if you want to get this make sure you have you know something else to back you with uh, with like the music files that you listen to as well as the um headphones and the stuff that you're going to use um, it does have um 
analog out so you know rca out, i mean and um, you can use that with your hi-fi system but again that will depend on your speakers um, if they are really really good enough if they are fast and they can pick up everything that this thing throws out that's going to be fine i mean i can really go on for ages but i think it's been a while long enough um, so that's my review of the hugo 2 uh, i'm sure there's a lot of things i missed out but i'm going to end it here if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below thank you for watching i'll see you guys in another video